We are going to be talking about NVIDIA quietly informs AICs of 8 to 12 percent drop in cost for its GPUs. Huge news for GPUs, I think, at this point. But we have just received word that NVIDIA has informed AICs of a decrease in its cost basis, which will be passing on to AICs and who will be passing it on to SLS, which is system integrators in return. In other words, this lowering in cost of 8 to 12 percent is something that gamers can expect to happen in the next few weeks after adjusting for inventory buffers of retailers. This is something that hasn't happened in years, well, pretty much since the recent crypto boom began, and is a significant indicator of the first real price easing since 2020. It's not really the first price indicator that we've seen because we are starting to see the increase of the retail costs on various outlets such as Best Buy and Newegg already come down, especially on the AMD side as they're having issues moving stock and also getting in trouble in China for, you know, mislabeling some GPUs here on accident here and there, you know, no big deal. But we do see a few price drops already coming in. This price drop to me doesn't sound like it's directly to the consumer. If you guys have been basically staying on top of base, uh, GPU bots, GPU purchasing bots, you're aware that the FE cards are already cheaper. And it, this seems like a production cost reduction and should decrease in theory, at least for system integrators, the price of the Founders Edition GPUs. Does that translate over to third party board manufacturers? That's kind of the question, and I'm not really sure that's true. So the price ease for gamers here isn't really what I'm seeing. What I'm seeing is a price easing for the system integrators, more like Dell, HP, the big boys, right? Alienware, whatever that might be. GPU prices have been steadily declining in the wake of the lackluster cryptocurrency market capitalization and with Ethereum contemplating the shift to proof of stake later this year. We have seen a month to month decline for almost three months now and Nvidia is about to bring the price drop even more. While price declines so far have been dictated by the demand side of the equation, we have received word that Nvidia has informed AICs that it saw a lowering in its cost of manufacturing by around 8 to 12%, which it will pass on to AICs. AICs in return will pass the savings on to SLS, system integrators, where it should eventually end up saving a few dollars in the gamer's pocket. I disagree. Once again, this isn't targeted towards gamers unless you're buying a, a, a something like a pre-built PC to me is what it sounds like. It doesn't sound like third-party board manufacturers are necessarily guaranteed to get this price drop. Maybe you guys can help me out there, but that's how I see it kind of playing out. Obviously, from the perspective of WCCF Tech, wanting to hit keywords, wanting to hit those trends for the algorithm, talking about gaming GPUs dropping in price is gonna be beneficial, so I get it. And possibly it could mean in the future that we see a price drop, but right now, specifically for individual GPUs. I'm not necessarily thinking that's what this means. That being said, <clears throat> keeping in mind that a lowering in cost of GPUs does not mean that the supply will necessarily be improved simultaneously. GPUs are still very hard to find as cryptocurrency mining does remain profitable and will continue to remain profitable, they note. But there are several factors that will continue to bring down GPU prices throughout this year. One is, of course, the potential ROI that needs to be mentioned for cryptocurrency and the fact that a lot of the retail pricing for GPUs right now, even with the $300 price cut we saw on the card, the 6700 uh, this week, it's not quite enough to really bring that ROI into an attractive level in a lot of cases. Here's some of the bullet points from the article. Yields at Samsung are improving and NVIDIA is exploring the option to tap both TSMC and Samsung simultaneously. If it chooses to go down this route, it will mean both the RTX 30 and 40 series existing in harmony and basically twice the amount of wafer allocation. Now we did also already talk about this. They will be manufacturing 
the 30 series along with Ada Lovelace. This will quite obviously help with the supply issues. Intel Alchemist GPUs are launching this year as well, although the exact supply situation on that front remains to be seen. It is clear, however, that a third player in the market can only improve the prevailing undersupply situation of the market, not necessarily. So just because you have another third GPU company doesn't necessarily mean that you are increasing the supply of overall GPUs, primarily because you need to keep in mind that a lot of the parts that are being manufactured, the chips that are needed for the GPUs, especially on the memory side, are typically manufactured all by the same company. And because it's really a memory limited problem, it could actually just mean that you have less of each company in theory. It doesn't always mean that you're going to always have more production just because you have a third, third board manufacturer here or a third GPU company in Intel. So it's a, it's a little bit of a far reach to say because Intel's making them that there will be more supply. Because the specific part in all of computing that is basically bottlenecking the entire industry from the manufacturing of chips for cars to GPUs is the memory chips themselves. We're talking about Samsung and TSMC. Why would NVIDIA be trying to tap both TSMC and Samsung? Because they need more manufacturing. Where is Intel going to get its memory chips from TSMC? Where is AMD going to get their memory chips from TSMC? This is the problem. And it doesn't mean that because we have a third GPU supplier or, or manufacturer at this point that you are going to see an alleviation of addition with additional supply. That's, that's just not necessarily the the for sure case here. Ethereum's merge is now tentatively scheduled for Q2 of 2022. On its official roadmap, the Ethereum Foundation states that the merge upgrade will be shipped by the end of Q2 2022. I actually have not seen this. Where's the leak? Boom. How long ago was this? Which one are they talking about? This was 17 hours ago, so we got to cover this too. Okay. So, however, the ongoing Russian invasion of Ukraine could result in unforeseen price hikes once the foundry's buffers of neon, which is another problem here that was brought to my attention yesterday by a viewer, which thank you guys, uh, run out. It is worth noting here that all of the big players have a lot of neon stored, so unless the conflict enters a protracted stage think months which is a possibility this should not be a real issue but it is a possibility it is a possibility and what we're talking about here is essentially materials that are specifically needed to manufacture gpus come from ukraine and because of everything going on in ukraine and the potential of that lasting a significantly longer time than it has already provided there's no resolution in short term it would mean a reduction in that supply to the manufacturers of that particular source of neons and then at that point you are not going to have the production that we currently have so we could see another uh, reduction in the amount of gps being manufactured or just chips in general, primarily once again, the focus being on the memory modules for these chips seeming to be the big bottleneck. All things considered, it does seem likely that GPU prices are going to keep coming down over the remaining year and we are going to see a massive influx of cheap secondhand GPUs and relatively cheap new GPUs. If you are a gamer and want to go with a DIY build, it might pay to wait a few months for the prices to come down more and that is a fair point it does feel very similar to cryptocurrency in general though what do i mean by that it's always like should you wait to purchase something or should you purchase it right now and it could go either way if you wait a few months and the conflict in ukraine continues and there ends up being a supply issue for these materials that the manufacturers need to 
create the GPUs, then the prices might go back up too, regardless of cryptocurrency mining. So it's like, should you wait? Well, if everything is going this direction and everything goes perfectly, the price could reduce, right? However, if things don't go perfectly, we start having these more shortage issues on, on the supply side, the pricing could get worse as well. It's really up in the air right now. It's kind of like when people are like, should I buy Bitcoin? And I always say, you know, right off the bat, I don't, I've never bought Bitcoin. I only mine it. That's so that kind of indemnifies me or like gets me out of that conversation. Right. It's like when people want to talk about religion, you just go, I'm an atheist. I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> I just go, and they're like, should I buy Bitcoin? I'm like, I'm a miner. I don't want to talk about it. And that's kind of how I get out of it in the normal day to day conversation. And that's because it's, it's the same situation, right? You could buy Bitcoin right now and due to whatever happening happens with the you know, executive orders and different regulations across the world and internationally, Bitcoin could skyrocket or it could go back down into a bear market, right? And so making that assumption that it's going to go one way and not the other way is a little silly. So we don't really have any verifiable proof that in a few months, GPUs will be cheaper than they are today. We do know that you can start getting some GPUs cheaper as of today though, right? So we've seen the price drops across the board and provided this is true, we should see some price drops here in initially for us to be purchasing some GPUs. So should you wait for the prices to come down even further is the question. And all I'm pointing out is to me, it seems like it reads like it could go either way. So that's kind of where I'm at. I hope you enjoyed this clip from the Crypto Mining Morning Show every Monday through Friday, 7.45 a.m. Pacific and 10.45 a.m. Eastern Time. You can check out more clips here or if you're interested in checking out the entire live show, you can check that out down here. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next Tuesday.